participants. And I request the speaker to begin. Thank you. Okay, good evening uh, viewers and uh, all the stakeholders. Uh, today the topic is remunerative prices for farmers. So let us start the whole session with about two, three questions. What is remunerative? We are not talking about what is remuneration. What is remunerative? For a software engineer, if you get less than one lakh rupees, that is non-remunerative for him. Okay, similarly, if, that means the value for the job you do and the value for the time you invest and the value for your innovation, invention and so on and so forth. So therefore, see today we talk about double in, doubling the income of the farmers. So whether the remuneration or the returns on investment or the returns on the uh, opportunity cost of his time, effort and all that, whether is he able to make a comfortable living or not. See, suppose you are a central government uh, uh, employee. So how is your DA calculated? DA is calculated based on the consumer price index and then how much of DA has to raise because you have to make the basic uh, cost of living and you have to lead uh, if not very comfortably and luxuriously, at least you can make the two ends meet. So today the million dollar question is whether farmers are getting enough remuneration and are they able to meet the uh, costs and uh, whether they are getting returns to run the family also to have access to health, education and some meaningful income is the question for the today's session. Now very quickly let us go. All this introduction, these are all with you and who am I and all those things have been told. Okay, now see there are two types of farming. One is the subsistence farming. Okay, which you see on this particular photograph, zoom cultivation or shifting cultivation, where it is a farmer is aiming only at subsistence. See, he takes a hill land or a tribal land where a majority of our uh, tandas are there. Okay, we say the hamlets. So, very minimal sort of cultivation, not so fertile soil. And once when the one or two crops comes, uh, so he is not putting more fertilizers or not doing any other issue and just hand to mouth existence. That is subsistence farming. The second thing is today people are talking about organic farming and rejuvenating soils and enough lectures and uh, uh, the resources have been shared. Where the uh, objective of farming is to enrich the soil and keep it sustainable on a longer run so that you need not shift the farm from one to another and then your uh, farm is continuously going to give returns for a basic uh, uh, unit of input which is being put. So the third level is called the commercial farming or the polyhouse cultivation and protected cultivation. I told you that uh, IHR boasts today of the center of excellence and protected cultivation of horticulture crops. All are IoT controlled and very high value crops like vanilla or uh, export oriented crops. You can grow off season vegetables. Okay, it can be even uh, broccoli, it can be English cucumber or uh, it can be any other uh, commercial. See, gherkins, for example, 100% export gherkins are transported to Europe. So, all these high uh, value crops are all grown on commercial farming scale using the protected cultivation. Most of them are IoT, sensor based, uh, controlled, and all those things. See, now the main argument is the agriculture price support. Suppose you are growing rice and wheat. So, how the minimum site support price is arrived at? So, whether the agriculture market Okay, whether it is a stabilized market, whether there is some remuneration or opportunity to come. See, suppose today agriculture is a highly protected agriculture. See, look at the price volatility. See, now price volatility is the support prices for wheat, maize and soybeans is increasing. But whereas in case of the house price index, okay, that is the, that's much more highly volatile market as compared to the agriculture market. And agriculture market, if it is not protected, and if you leave it to the forces of demand and supply, very simple economics. My economics teacher used to tell in my BSAG class, okay, if the supply is more, the demand will come down. Okay, and once when the demand comes down, okay, if the supply is more, the prices will fall. So everywhere, today, there is a record production of 335 million metric tons in horticulture, and at the same time, 315 to 320 million metric tons in agriculture. So it is a glut sort of situation. So in any glut sort of situation, I don't think that any economic curves of demand and supply 
okay demand and price okay supply and price all these things are showing a negative trend and farmer is at the receiving end and unless he is supported by government interventions of both subsidy the minimum support price or the market intervention scheme he could not make anything out of it so now all this is the government subsidies cover a large portion so that you know that will keep the because the supply is already very high the production is very high and the demand is somewhat inelastic like we cannot say that you know like unless the consumer goods see suppose your prices fall down there will be surplus purchase it's not like that see even if the prices fall down you are going to eat only uh, the 200 grams of rice or 100 gram of dal or whatever it is so it is not so elastic in nature and look at the especially this per uh, total consumption people have been trying to you know uh, subsidize some things and then give government subsidies okay so that in you know, the consumption also people are trying to from the government policy side to push the consumption so many sort of promotions we had the millet exhibition very recently okay like that you know a lot of promotions are also there atmanirbhar bharat it may be fisheries it may be swavalamban bharat so many schemes the government is rolling out just to protect the agriculture and make far farming remunerative so we have already told you 90 million plus farmers who are about 150 million farmers 80% are small and marginal so if the subsidy is not given okay what will happen is the prices will fall down if the prices fall down okay what will happen see now the supply is increasing on one side and the, the you see simple economics when the supply increases the prices will fall because the prices should not fall the government is giving a support price in the form of subsidy you can see this red mark so similarly see the farm acts were withdrawn i am not saying good or bad see the farm acts were withdrawn because what will happen is if you leave the entire agriculture produce for the free market forces okay and what will happen a glut sort of situation prices will crash and he may not get even his cost of cultivation that was one of the argument but at the same time the new farm uh, produce acts were aiming that farmer will diversify he will move away from rice and wheat to more remunerative crops or more protected i told you showed you in the first slide that means the aim was that farming will move from subsistence farming to sustainable farming to co commercial farming and the export oriented farming but every farmer cannot do and shift to that sort of a paradigm because to go for a protected cultivation and to have an export oriented farming you require a lot of skills studying the market business plan entrepreneurship startup models and so on and so forth so therefore good or bad uh, now the farm acts have been withdrawn so now there are examples about 10 richest farmers i can give okay see look at the farming maybe horticulture seasonal vegetables aloe vera organic farm corn okay polyols farming pomegranate see look at all this farming uh, enterprisal uh, sectors they are all moving into the protected cultivation and high commercial value farming then only you can become rich simply by wheat and paddy and uh, subsistence farming unless the government supports you your farming is not going to be remunerative this is one of the lesson we can take from this slide so then there was a small study saying that how much does the farmer earn annually in india so they told that he earns about 6427 per month whereas a taxi driver earns more than 15000 to 20000 a ola driver earns about 60000 a month and in that 60000 he has to pay an emi of about 18000 for his car which he has taken as a loan so totally 77124 is the income annually for a average farmer so not only hard work farmers should also start smart work so it is something like that what are smart cities smart earning smart work means by putting less effort you have to earn more money this is called smart living see why have the flat system come see why don't you have the suryavamsham type of big houses two acre houses today a small flat of about 1500 sft has got all the amenities accessible location specific you can access the metro you can access the internet you can have health facilities education facilities and income earning opportunities so in another statement they say if a farmer tickle the earth with a hoe it laughs with a crop so that means today agriculture has been taken as a mocking exercise as a humiliation 
so that means people who do farming are earning less <coughs> they are not able to make such profits so this is one of the paradoxical situation on which we are going to talk today how to make it more remunerative so why are indian farmers poor i have already told you the yield productivity is getting high okay the supply is increasing at the same time the farmers uh, the prices are falling and we are unable to diversify it and do any value addition and do export oriented sort of horticulture or agriculture so 51% of the agriculture production is done by small farmers and laborers and 70% in high value crops so therefore more crop per drop and all the productivity issues more than that what we wish to say is if at all you have to make the indian farming remunerative you will have to diversify you will have to have market led crops market led export oriented crops broccoli okay english cucumber okay and then we also have this bell pepper and many of these are all uh, export oriented crops and uh, today the horticulture department is giving an exclusive training for the farmers for protected cultivation of some of these crops with 100% export market gherkins and so on and so forth so now i told you record production already it's very high 300 plus mt 335 mt horticulture at the year ending 2022 and then all these things uh, even from the past uh, five year production year on year it's very high okay and uh, thanks to the agriculture technologies the farmers the extension service and all the stakeholders who are involved in it uh, today it's a record production but where is the record remuneration okay real estate a small piece of land purchased in a big city for about 20000 today fetches more than 20 crores so look at the 200 times appreciation 300 to 2000 times appreciation but such an appreciation does not take place in agriculture crops or horticulture crops just because the production is more and uh, we have to do really something for it to make it uh, okay tireless farmers and diligent scientists so this is another slogan so farmers are also working hard and scientists are coming with newer and newer uh, technologies bt and you know so many other things not only from the improvement side Uh, it is a drone technology so uh, then it is a, a precision farming okay controlled through drones and data driven precision agriculture record production so now if you see the world average in spite of this production of india still india is lagging behind in the productivity part the tons per hectare look at the blue one are all india so with with this less production only we are having glut situation if we really reach the potential yield then you can imagine what sort of glut is there and how government would have to buy back all these things and give so how many support prices and subsidizing agriculture to that extent is it really worth it or not and the agriculture growth year on year in percentage you know they have been seeing variations in alternate year maybe due to the rainfall and all that you can see the troughs and the peaks okay and uh, you know many peak states in assam is the largest producer of tea so now we have came out with this odop concept just to do something where where your comparative advantage and key specialization is there you grow those crops including value addition supply chain value chain and marketing but uh, still farmers are suffering okay uh, then agriculture contribution to gdp is shrinking so it is just about 18.8% last year so but 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 the service sector has uh, contributed more to the gdp that is the software exports and software programming and so on and so forth more than 60% is there an industry is at uh, something around 30% rest is all the service sector so in spite of record production in spite of very heavy technologies in spite of glut situation the gdp contribution and gross value added is less and at the same time because of this sort of a glut situation farmer is not able to get the remunerative price and how how much we can subsidize that is also the million dollar question we cannot do it so then similarly the exports are also increasing but the exports are bringing the foreign exchange to the country but what the farmer should get is at least the minimum support price or the market intervention scheme where msp is not there so something to support because definitely the value which is earned through export or import or the see all those things see whether can we pass on and see suppose the cost of cultivation of let us say bajra is about 1200 rupees that is the minimum support price okay and the market prices as are sometimes less than the msp so minimum support price may be higher than the 
uh, okay, the market rate. So this is a situation and a very stark situation. So therefore, the agriculture exports are increasing. So the uh, the lessons to be learned from this particular uh, visual is that you know farmers should go more for export oriented crops and try to earn foreign exchange and also profits. So then the agri imports also if you. Do import substitution, especially in terms of vegetable oils, fresh fruits, pulses, cashew, natural rubber, okay, which we are importing at this level. If you reduce the imports, also it is as good as uh, saving your foreign exchange and contributing to the uh, GDP and the welfare of the country. So at least farmers can do this, so that you know their uh, remuneration is going to increase. So see, look at our uh, top ten agrees for marine basmati rice, buffalo meat spices. Raw cotton, oil, sugar. That is the reason you know people grow more cotton. They grow more barfmati rice, and marine uh, fisheries has taken a big lead. In spite of the freshwater aquaculture uh, being at a staggering 66 percent, that is more than the marine uh, fisheries. See, these are some of the you uh, see you see the minus and the plus here. Wherever plus is there, for example, 6.6 is the plus, the growth. Whereas in other products, okay, the non-barfmati rice. Is decreasing. That means you you should not grow more of uh, non basmati rice. You grow for basmati rice, which is our export potential. Then only the remuneration can be. That means in a nutshell, if you see this particular visual, wherever the plus are there, okay, you should grow those crops so that your remuneration can increase. Wherever the minus is there, if you continue to grow that or produce those products, you will be definitely under loss. Similarly. Okay, look at our export destinations. See, in the, for the, our export destination, the U.S. has reduced, Vietnam has reduced, but whereas in uh, Iran, China, it has increased. So wherever we are going to get, see now there is a lot of de-dollarization happening. De-dollarization means you, with the recent Ukraine war, you started purchasing the Russian oil by paying ruble and even in rupee you were transacting. So that means if you if you want more dollars to come into your place. You should ex you should export more with uh, the countries who use dollars for their exchange. So this is how uh, and, uh, the crops concomitantly linked with that will get more remuneration. Obvious about that. So look at the percentage growth wherever it is negative. You should do raw cotton. You still have advantage. Therefore, farmers grow more cotton. So, but many times what happens? People say we, by growing more cotton. People are committing more suicide because of more cost of cultivation. It is not because of the increasing cost of cultivation, but in case of cotton, there was an export ban suddenly. So I don't know. I say I am not here to comment on why the export ban was there and what should be the policies of the government. But at least I can tell you this much in this presentation: wherever the percentage growth shows positive in the export in million dollars, I think you should cont continue to cultivate those crops. See, especially processed fruit and vegetables, 18.71 percent growth. You should do more of processing, more of beverages, more of probiotics. Okay, tea we are negative because you have you are you have competition from Sri Lanka and other things. Sugar we are still at a high. See, in spite of all these things, you know, sugar cane production people are discouraging. You don't get that uh, minimum support price of sugar cane. In spite of uh, in spite of all that, sugar uh, is showing good exports. See, raw cotton is showing good exports. non basmati rice is still good okay growing rice is much better okay whereas the yeah, the agriculture commodity the percentage growth of basmati rice is only 4.5 although the potential is there therefore we we say that the farmers kindly shift from non basmati rice to basmati rice okay although the percentage growth is there so wherever you get more dollars you have to shift those crops the agri exports have been increasing over a period of time Okay, and then obviously the oil mills, the raw cotton. See, these are all showing positive trend. Okay, whereas wheat and all are showing lesser uh, amount of export. So one should discourage. Okay, especially buffalo meat we are under red. Sugar we are still uh, good color. We can do it. So coming to the cost of cultivation, why is remuneration is not increasing? Is the cost commission uh, chairman? Okay, Vijay Paul is my uh, old colleague. And then we have NP Singh there. He is also my other trusted friend. We were all peer the classmate. And then they come out with this cost of cultivation A2, which includes all the input seed, and then the FL is farm labor. Okay, all these things when computed, okay, 
they have come out with a comprehensive cost okay the actual cost plus the family labor imputed cost or it's also called the opportunity cost and then we come out with the total cost see in case of uh, look at this if the msp is not offered okay 2277 okay this was the estimate if you offer less than this okay in spite of offering 227 he is making a very marginal profit of 260 rupees per quintal in case of barley it is you know with this particular msp 523 whereas masoor you know with the msp offered he makes 1133 profit with rape seed and mustard with record production we have so much of export potential only 209 safflower is still good so but safflower is a tricky rabi crop risky crop because it has got more thorns and you know breeders are trying to come out with this uh, uh, thornless safflower but it is a very remunerative crop at least in this table comparatively one should shift more to the safflower it requires less water it can be very easily grown in rajasthan and all the desert areas with less water with using drip or whatever so knowing all these figures also still farmer continue the high intensified water required of the paddy paddy after paddy and you know the recent msps and especially the you know people uh, farmers did dharna in haryana punjab and all that why should the wheat or wheat or wheat or rice be continued when still it is giving less remuneration why are they not shifting to more remunerative crops of pomegranate or rape seed or mustard which gives you more income and remuneration so uh, similarly look at the cost of production and the current msp paddy very very marginal look at this whereas in case in case of jowar it is very unprofitable see because the cost of cultivation is more than the current msp offered you see in case of jowar we have this negative trend double thing okay and uh, very very marginal in case of paddy therefore uh, we say kindly to even still bajra is better recently i i organized 500 farmers in an fpo to uh, grow this fortified bajra where iron fortified bajra was used and uh, it fetches a premium price it's still better bajra is better although we say it is the poor man's millet okay look at ragi it again makes losses uh, maize also not much okay arhar okay quite marginal we can say moong dal for example look at this 5700 current msp is only 55 so if you grow moong dal you will get a loss although we are protein deficient and then we want all that see look at the economics and statistics of more important urad also very similar uh, groundnut soya bean so not much so what i wish to say is the current msp that does not cover the cost of production therefore these should be the guidance points for the extension workers and the policy makers to say that which that particular crop should be grown to make farming more remunerative so profit uh, percentage profit in case of wheat barley you know all that's been given so out of this figures rape seed and mustard is going to give more but today you have come out with this uh, bt mustard but the only objection for that was that uh, it is going to kill the honey bees because uh, mustard is a cross pollinated crop and if without cross pollination the seed setting won't be there and if you use the gm mustard it is only a thinking i am not very sure and the research data is uh, again divided on these issues uh, whether cross pollination is affected or this 44% profit is going to come so similarly we have uh, all the day by day the cost the percentage cost of total cost is increasing and that is the trend and the labor shortage and labor cost increasing all these issues are there and look at this the msps are there but the percentage uh, increase also msp is increasing but how far it can increase but whereas look at this uh, safflower the increase of msp of safflower was almost 20.6% but that concomitant increase is not coming in other crops so therefore you should also understand this policy making and government triggers which are which are indicating which crops to grow i think farmers should take tips from these things and then grow those remunerative crops in order to make their farming remunerative so better returns returns over cost okay so i mean this is nothing but the marginal return and the marginal cost okay bajra is still good i'm telling you look at this figure bajra is giving 85% more returns as compared to the cost so the returns are high because the msp msp was high or the demand and supply was high see let me tell you in agriculture in india or any other place in the world without government intervention if you allow agriculture crops 
to have the free market forces of demand and supply my god it will be a glut situation and uh, uh, you know in hindi we say barbad ho jayega so you will be doomed so therefore okay i'll come on the conclusion stage of why the government intervention is necessary but uh, the lesson taken or taking lesson home is so whichever returns are over the cost the good kindly grow, grow for those crops bajra is still good so we have next with uh, you know this sort of things and then now coming back to the difference between msp and farmers demand so the cost is uh, 1997 but the msp is only 1840 over the years so that means uh, there is there is a chance or uh, there is a request from the farmers to increase the msp although it might not have been done of course uh, i am not uh, blaming the cost commission or the government of india so they have their own reasons why uh, they cannot ms uh, increase the msp every now and then uh, then similarly uh, export prices of broken uh, rice have almost been very constant okay india produces about 25% of the broken rice uh, still over the less uh, it is almost you can see a flat uh, curve here almost elastic because i am not seeing the spikes of triggers uh, suddenly you get more money for this so therefore be careful so the gap in farm income and non farm income look at this graph very important today non farm income is for example by earning by wages uh, becoming a uh, becoming a driver okay coming to the city and working these are all non farm income the non farm income is more than the farm income therefore there is a tendency for migration and people come to cities for search of lucrative pastures so average monthly income of a farmer household okay from wages he gets this much and cultivation he get this much okay animals and then non farm business also this is actually in case of rupees you see how much they are getting so more of non farm business and other diversification one should do the income boost is uh, very good in lentil and uh, i have already shown you mustard we already discussed whereas wheat and barley are still fetching less so therefore wherever you get income boost and the percentage change is there over the year 21 to 22 kindly go for that so percentage income derived by agriculture by large farmers so you know you can see the peaks here west bengal is much better okay then uh, uh, i think fairly they are quite good uh especially large farmers are getting good income and not the small and marginal where the risk is more both the c2 is computed by the cost of cultivation plus family labor so now the import share we have already seen if you reduce the import share and increase the export share also okay your remuneration can increase better returns we have already told you okay msp versus cost okay so here you can see uh, many of these crops okay when government uh, interferes in the market he gets some little bonus okay and uh, very very minimal whereas in case of ragi and all only for home consumption you should do it and not for commercial cultivation although people say ragi biscuit jowar biscuit and all they are not so remunerative okay and then look at this cotton okay uh, the cost is more so he is right see although there is more export demand don't confuse that export demand with the cost of cultivation okay the msp offered is 4020 whereas the cost is high so the cost of cultivation of uh, uh, cotton is increasing not only because of the uh, bt cotton is giving protection to up to 2500 uh, rupees of the uh, pesticide cost but uh, today the sucking pests are taking uh, a lead and uh, they are attacking so cotton is still a vulnerable crop as far as plant protection is concerned okay so now the consumer share of the rupee okay people say that if a remunerative agriculture has to take place okay at least 60 to 70 paise of the 1 rupee share has to come to farmers that is not happening because no value addition hardly is getting only 15 paise or 20 paise of the uh, 20% uh, 66% is expected but 20% is what he gets uh, because market prices are declining because of demand and supply I told you very high supply okay and uh, okay the de the demand is also almost inelastic the demand is not increasing for fresh fruits vegetables or crops only value added products also i see minimal demand but see some of them should be exported there only you have demand see i think this is a game between the uh, uh, between the local market the export market then the profit on growth and the msp and so on and so forth then farmers should be very very tricky if not the farmers the policy makers or people from the agriculture department horticulture department the extension workers have got a message to say that 
we need to guide the farmers both on a temporal and spatial scale to go for profitable agriculture and of course we say organic farming is good there's a big hype about uh, paramparagat krishi i am not blaming anyone i am see but they are all less remunerative see farmer has to take more risk put more investment go for export oriented i told you broccoli okay english cucumber or this uh, bell pepper which are in very high demand these are the exotic uh, including gherkins for sour krat and so on so people uh, fail to uh, see these figures and uh, apply it into their agriculture business but uh, you know uh, see you cannot do uh, emotion agriculture you have to do practical business oriented agriculture so crop output and income i've already told you wholesale price index everything has been told so so very quickly i'm coming to the conclusion state and we'll take a couple of questions why the returns are not good even after bumper harvest the reason is overflowing stock glut situation not a huge demand for say, uh, food grains Big, uh, be, uh, be not a huge demand because we told you agriculture production fresh produce is uh, somewhat inelastic it does not become elastic so then uh, especially during pandemic there was reduced purchasing power people could not move mobility was an issue so doubling farm uh, farmers income so many things were told okay the only thing which i highlighted is unless you shift to non farm jobs your income cannot increase simply by increasing productivity production of livestock or crops improved efficiency more crop per drop and input use you cannot do it increasing crop intensity all this will add more production to the country and more uh, we have more uh, nutrition security and food security we have 90 million metric tons in our uh, food go downs that is all fine but to, be, uh, to improve the price realization by farmers so we require some more innovation i have been speaking with lot of my agriculture economics friends and more friends i have from agriculture economics than extension so i keep telling where are your business models everybody has a business model for export there is a subsidy for import there is a subsidy given to you and there is a support price there is a tax holiday given to a software company and so on and so forth but where are the business models and game plans for the farmer is the question i ask my economics friends and of course it's a very highly debatable topic i will not go into that because the time of presentation is short so export policy they wanted to double the farm income okay although 18% of the world population is supported by 2.5% of the world's land we are still very good in agriculture let me tell you our production our water resources our productivity is absolutely very high except you know we are unable to bring innovations in increasing the remuneration of farmers which i have already discussed so then people ask whether rising msp is the only solution not necessarily okay you also bring market reforms people came with rems okay regulated electronic market they say enam will solve the problem okay then national trading that is not happening because see this uh, that uh, apmc license uh, for enam it says if you buy one license uh, throughout india you can do it but that is not really happening so all these things are there gentlemen and uh, they are adding to the challenges so people say they you know inefficient physical operations then lot of crowding of intermediaries i don't know how to remove them fragmented market chain see just like you have a milk grid we are so i told you we are number one in milk production and uh, our uh, milk grid is there and suffer tried it with the vegetable and other grid but the same uh, marketing grid is not occurring in other crops and things so even today farmers have to suffer and uh, stand in front of various roads and uh, do dharna to get their prices so what needs to be done is farming wholesaling warehousing logistics processing and retailing so this is what i have told you need to bring very revolutionary innovations in all this farming of course the agriculture scientists have taken care wholesaling and retailing i am not sure we require you know especially we have that uh, uh, what is that national institute of agriculture marketing nia it's at jaipur okay my friend was the dg of that and now that has been merged with managed no issues but more innovation should come in wholesaling retailing warehousing then especially the, the logistics especially you have a kisan rat app so where you know uh, the transportation is all uh, subsidized or you get it at the button click but that will not help you gentlemen unless you do processing and retailing and obviously we say earlier we say production to market but now we say market to production what is the demand in the market you have to produce that and there the supply chain should be well established before you do the promotion and production 
so that's how it goes so the farm business is not so easy to do although many startups and entrepreneurs have come in the morning lecture in another session i told that uh, we are doing a startup in agri the input side is always fine so we say that in agriculture business the input factorization is occurring but the output commercialization is failing so we are unable to get remunerative prices strong government support is also required there should already be a price stabilization fund just like we have an apcs fund for agriculture research crop insurance of course people have apathy towards it people don't invest or or the government can simply give a free crop insurance in case it fails and he gets he will fail to get the minimum remuneration the crop insurance should be able to compensate these are only some suggestions and obviously this crop livestock integration i have been hearing it for the past 30 years okay and uh, i don't know how just because he integrates it okay it can add and augment his income but definitely when i say remunerative agriculture uh, that means something else for me because that english sentence is different so biomass utilization especially the recycling you know we say bio resource flows and then recycling the waste matter and uh, mulching and don't burn your crop all those things also we done so, so let me quickly conclude gentlemen i think uh, my time is up and uh, i just shot uh, for 10 minutes i'll open for discussion this is the last slide so now we say agriculture is dying but the production is not dying because food is a desirable profession food is required so government has to support you require this high production otherwise you cannot go with a begging bowl like 1960s with record high production there is a glut situation okay and because of high migration there is shortfall in labor okay and larger farms are relying on imported farm laborers see even people come from nepal to work in kerala come on in the present difficult scenario especially even after covid the agriculture is, uh, the sector is the low hanging fruit that means it is less remunerative people could tell me that they will do agriculture only after they earn enough money in cities in the industrial sector or the service sector may i see many cinema stars after they lose their demand in the cinema industry they have done a big form and you know they they only publicize they're saying that uh, they are doing livestock integration they are doing farming that is only for the gimmick purpose and uh, publicity purpose but actually in agriculture is a low hanging fruit that means it is a less profitable profession government have an opportunity to boost more and more of growth agriculture with lot of efforts of technology support especially in supply chain and value chain this will also lead to growth of the manufacturing sector and spur the overall economic growth okay this is what is there so if okay to the last sentence i wish to say before i open for the and stop sharing my presentation is if agriculture industry is export oriented okay then uh, the industry also can think of export oriented because the raw materials come from agriculture and the service sector which is relying on the foreign uh, uh, medicines and foreign dyes and uh, cosmetics also can be produced with the, in india with the available field with medicinal and aromatic crops or drug industry all these three things after integration only agriculture can become uh, profitable and remunerative thank you very much i stop sharing open it for discussions the session is now open for discussion sir over to agreeinformation.com Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. Yeah. I will take up the questions from the participants now. Uh, the first question is: What is the difference between FRP and MSP? No, no. MSP is. I'll I'll just I give you. No, no. The FRP that is farm gate farm realized price. That means what is the price he realizes at the farm. See many times what happens is this marketing cost is there. Suppose you prepare, you harvest mangoes ten tons, so farm realized price. So at the farm gate, let us say you may be offered. Uh, okay, suppose if it is all farms of mango, you may be offered twelve uh, rupees or fifteen rupees. But the MSP is of course mango does not have MSP. Some have MSP. The MSP is the minimum support price offered by the government, without which you cannot buy. See suppose if I say. the msp of paddy is 1500 rupees nobody can buy it less than that that is actually the rule but the market prices can be less than that that is called the farm realized price frp can be less than the msp msp is a support price 
announced by the government it is not necessary that you will get it okay who decides fair and remunerative price what is it who decides fair and remunerative price see the cost commission uh, of india cci it's called cost commission of india is sits at new delhi dr vijay pal sharma my erstwhile colleague is the chairman of the cost commission of india the assistant uh, chairman is uh, one dr np singh is my phd classmate i told you these two are agriculture economics they have a team of experts from various branches of agronomy and other things they keep going uh, touring all over the country and uh, they study the cost structure that uh, c1 c2 and then uh, how much msp should be offered it is they these people who decide and suggest the government to offer okay this is only a suggestive body just because they suggest it is not necessary and mandatory for government to implement it so the cost commission of india which sits at new delhi which is having a bunch of agriculture economics and all my very very good friends so they are the people who decide these things okay uh, we have one general question sir uh, do rich farmers in india pay income tax no 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 see uh, okay see uh, i think i think uh, you are dhanlakshmi am i right okay i'm just using it yeah yeah no no dhanlakshmi see one thing is there if you no no kindly don't mistake because i am uh, asking a question to answer your question okay see now we have 100 people in india let us say our population of india is 100 So now only you know how many tax about ten percent twenty percent are genuine taxpayers. Even when big industrialists and uh, people are uh, hoodwinking the government and not paying tax, you you fall on the very small proportion of farmers. I told you ten rich farmers. So the whoever the rich farmers I am showing, definitely they will be paying the tax, or there is definitely an ITR one or two in place. so let us not uh, you know focus all our uh, little energies on this <laughs> farmers at least uh, the farmers who even have missed the tax uh, net also at least they are our uh, uh, you know productive and uh, uh, they are our contact farmers and they can be used for publicity to promote farming so rather than i think we should focus more on those tax evaders and then the fraudsters like malya and xyz uh, who have been put into big scams and uh, converted uh, india into a monastery okay thank you mr sir we have now completed the round of questions on behalf of agricultureinformation.com we like to thank dr v k j raghavendra rao for the talk and for answering the questions i like to also thank all the participants in this meeting this meeting will now be closed thank you very much hope to yeah, see you again in the next session good luck yeah thank you sir i leave the meeting